Hey everybody, tonight we are debating whether or not Muhammad is a true prophet, and we are starting right now with Shuaib's opening statement from the yes side. Thanks for being with us. Shuaib, the floor is all yours. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for this platform. Uh, anyways, by the way, my name is Baba Shuaib. Uh, I'm here representing uh, the Muslim side where I have to present uh, if Muhammad is a true prophet. Uh, yeah. So first of all, about Ausbillah bin Ashitar Rajim, I seek refuge with Allah against the Akaz devil. I start by quoting from the Quran, chapter 7, verse 156. And I'm reading up to 157. In context, it starts from above, but to get the gist of what we are talking about today. And God says, and decree for, uh, Moses said, and decree for us what is good in this world and in the hereafter. Indeed, we are guided to you. He, God, said, my punishment will strike whomever I will thereby, but my mercy encompasses all things. So I will decree it for those who are pious and give the charity, and they are those who believe in our verses. 157, who follow the messenger, the unlearned prophet, whom they found written with them in the Torah and the gospel. He commands them to kindness and forbid them from abomination and makes lawful for them the good things and prohibit for them the bad things and takes off their burden from them as well as the shackles which were upon them. Therefore, those who believe in him, honor him, support him and follow the light which was revealed along with him, they are those who will be the successful. So 158 tells the messenger to say, O you mankind, I am a messenger of God to you all. The one to whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth, there is no God except him. He gives life and causes death. So believe in God and his messenger, the online prophet, who believes in God and his words and follow him, perhaps you will be guided. Now we can see clearly from these verses I quoted from the Quran, based on the fact that he is a messenger and a prophet at the same time, that, that is Muhammad, as said in Quran chapter 33, verse 40, Muhammad is not the father of anyone among your men, but a messenger of God and the seal of the prophet, and God is aware of all things. Now when you go to Quran chapter 47, verse 2, he says, as for those who believe and do good deeds, and believe in what was revealed to Muhammad, which is the truth, because he came with the truth from their Lord, he will atone their bodies for them and improve their situation. Now, according to the Bible, when we go to 1 John chapter uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 6, it tells us the criteria on how to know who is a true prophet and a false prophet. So he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, which Muhammad does, as we see in Quran chapter 19, verse 30 to verse 34. And verse 3 says, And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that of anti this spirit is of Antichrist. Then it says, And whereof ye have heard that it shall come. And even now already it is in the world. Verse 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you and he that is in the world. Verse 5, they are of the world, therefore speak of the world, and the world hear them. Verse 6, we are of God, he that not God hears us. He that is not of God hears not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So according to this criteria, we can clearly see the spirit of truth represents a true prophet, while the spirit of error represents false prophet. So by this criteria, we can clearly testify that Muhammad salam, brought a book whereby testifies that Jesus came in flesh. And the criteria given in these verses clearly say that if this uh, spirit confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is of God. So when we go to John chapter 16, verse 12 to verse 15, he, Jesus, is saying, I, Jesus, have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that he shall speak, and he shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Now, underline the word glorify. It doesn't mean he's worshiping him. Now, again, here, then he says, all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore, said I, 
that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. So whatever Jesus brought into the Gospels was given to Muhammad as well, confirmed by the Quran, which we can see. Now, when you go to Isaiah chapter 42, you read from verse 1 to verse 23, it gives you the prophecy of which prophet is coming. But I give you the summary of it for the sake of time. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 1 says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delight, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. And we know clearly Jesus was not sent to the Gentiles. Matthew chapter 15 verse 24, it says, I was not sent but to the lost ship of Israel. So not to the Gentiles. Then Isaiah chapter 42 verse 19 clearly says, tells you in between. He says, who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? So, in to context, if you read from Isaiah 42, verse 1 up to verse 23, it gives you the gist of the prophet which was mentioned in the Bible. So verse 23 says, who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? This is a prophecy. So in summary, I give you Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 to verse 13. He says, whom shall he, this prophet we are talking about, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from milk, from the milk and drawn from the breast. Verse 10, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to these people. So it's not part of the children of Israel. Then he says, to whom he said, this is the rest where with ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they will not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, lie upon line, lie upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. So into context, chapter 28, verse 9 to verse 13, clearly gives you the gist of this prophet being spoken about. So I'll hand it over to Muhammad so that he can finish off the rest. Thank you. Peace and blessings uh, on the messengers and uh, hello everybody. So just to carry on from what my uh, colleague here, uh, Baba Shwaiba said, I want to start off by the history of the children of Israel, which is a simple story. God tasked the seed of Jacob and his descendants to make the truth apparent to the people and the rest of humanity uh, or the Gentiles about who the God of Abraham is. This is why they are the chosen people. Moses was sent to bring them out of the darknesses that they were in and supported them with a book from God, which we know as the Torah. The number of people that chose to uphold the covenant and tell the truth about God started to dwindle over time. And the children of Israel shifted the focus from we are the chosen people to guide towards God or tell the truth about God. And life is about God to we are the chosen people and it's about us. So God sent Jesus, the Messiah, to the children of Israel as a messenger to bring the truth back to God and make sure his followers to testify that they are to give the victory back to God. Now, over time, instead of giving the victory to God, the children of Israel that followed Jesus started to give the victory to Jesus. And again, no one was left to show the truth to the Gentiles. So God, as promised in the Bible, uh, sent a Gentile prophet to the Gentiles with God's words flowing from his mouth and gave them a way to get guided to the Lord of Abraham without the need of the children of Israel. When somebody has the words of God flowing directly from his from him, that in essence is the definition of Nabi in Arabic or Navi in Hebrew or a prophet in English. Now, Muhammad, just like Jesus, peace be upon both of them, both spoke on behalf of God in the first person. So in John 14, 14, uh, Jesus said, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And in 14, 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And in 14, 21, he has, he that has my commandments and keeps them. He is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father and I will love him. And we will man and I will manifest myself to him. Now, in Quran chapter 2, 159, uh, the prophet, and you have to put your mentality in the Arabians, where a man stood up and said, Indeed, those who conceal what we have revealed of the proofs and guidance after that which after that which we have made clear in the book to the people, those are the ones whom God has cursed, and they are cursed by the cursors, except 
those who repent and reform and make it known, then those, then those are the ones whom I will forgive. For I am the compassionate and the merciful. And another example in chapter 3660, uh, again, Prophet Muhammad stood up and said, Did I not make an agreement with you, O children of Adam, that you shall not serve the devil, that he is a clear enemy to you, and that you should serve me? That is the straight and narrow path, or that's the straight path. And I'm using the great Quran translation, which is translated by Baba Shai. So, so God has put his words directly into his prophets. That's something that Jesus did, and that's something what Prophet Muhammad did. Peace be upon them both. Another definition that is found inside the Bible of what a prophet is, is in Numbers 12, 6. He said, listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. There are many examples in the Quran where God is supporting, uh, supporting Muhammad with visions that Muhammad told his followers, said visions, and then they came into fruitation. Finally, Muhammad prophesied the end of the Arabian polytheistic culture. From the start of his journey, he made it very clear that the land will be clear from polytheism and the victory will come back to God, just like how Jesus said that the victory should go back to God. Now, the one and only Lord that created the skies and earth is the Lord that Muhammad preached about and, uh, and gave the victory to. Now, in Luke 24, 19, when the disciples allegedly spoke with Jesus about Jesus, they said he was a prophet, powerful in word and deeds before God and all the people. So now the thing that I would like my opponents to focus on here is the part about the deeds before God. Prophet Muhammad practiced everything that he preached. He gave everything he had to the world in both knowledge and material gain. He took care of the orphans. He took care of the needy. He prayed often and consistently. He purified himself externally and internally. He was soft-spoken, well-mannered, and God-fearing. As he grew in power and influence, he protected the community, and he didn't chase to, uh, the worldly pleasures. He was steadfast and he was sure of God's promises that most have came to pass. We are waiting for the biggest promise, promise, which is the day of judgment. Now, a prophecy that every prophet needs to convey. Prophet Muhammad, not only did he practice what he preached, but what he preached is what uh, what he preached to the Gentiles is what Moses, David, Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, preached to the children of Israel. Muhammad wasn't an outliner or an edge case for what the religion is telling you to do as a human being. And Prophet Muhammad was powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. So I would like to now hand it over to uh, our colleagues on the other side. Thank you very much, Muhammad, for that opening as well. And want to let you know, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you're from, Christian, atheist, Muslim, you name it. We're glad that you're here. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button as we have many more debates coming up. You don't want to miss them. And a couple of quick housekeeping things. Someone just told me and showed me a screenshot today. In the comments, there's someone impersonating Modern Day Debate. It is not anybody associated with Modern Day Debate if they are in the comments trying to get you to contact them on WhatsApp in order to do a business deal. So just to be sure you know that's not Modern Day Debate, just to be crystal clear, as well as want to let you know all of our guests are linked in the description box. Do check out their links. Even if you disagree, you might as well at least understand what you're disagreeing with. And with that, thank you very much, David Wood. And Avery, the floor is all yours for your opening as well. You hear me, James? Yes. All right. Well, uh, that they took about 12 and a half minutes, so I, I think we get about the same amount of time, so that'll work. Uh, so thanks, James, and thank you, Muhammad and Shuaib, for defending your prophet. Not a lot of Muslims are willing to do that nowadays. Uh, so was Muhammad a true prophet? I've been interacting with Muslims for many years, I'm going to give my general overview on this topic based on uh, past discussions with Muslims and from reading and so on. And then for the remainder of this debate, we can focus on the points uh, raised by our Muslim friends tonight. I can't think of a person anywhere in all of history that I would trust less, less than I trust Muhammad. Uh, he checks more false prophet boxes than any other false prophet could ever dream of. So let's think of a few of the different kinds of ways we, that we can examine the prophet of Islam. 
So we've got spiritual reliability. Muhammad's first impression of his revelations was that they were demonic. He became so depressed that he tried to commit suicide. His wife and her cousin soon convinced him that he wasn't possessed, he was a prophet. But I would say that sometimes your first impression is the correct one. Muhammad once delivered a revelation from the devil. These are the infamous satanic verses which promoted polytheism. He said you could pray to pagan goddesses. He eventually came back and said, in effect, the devil made me do it. Apparently, Muhammad couldn't tell the difference between a revelation from God and a revelation from Satan. Muhammad once claimed that he was the victim of a magic spell that gave him delusional thoughts and false beliefs. And if you read about how Muhammad received his revelations, it sounds like something out of an exorcist film. He would collapse on the floor. He would sweat profusely, even in the cold. His face would turn red. Not someone I would trust as spiritually reliable. I wouldn't trust him as morally reliable either. I'm not saying he was uh, bad in every way. There are things that uh, I would agree with Muhammad on. But this is a guy who, according to Muslim sources, tortured a man for money. He owned and traded black African slaves. He had sex with a nine-year-old girl. He had at least nine wives at one time, even though the Quran only allows four. Turns out Allah told him he could break the four-wife limit. Pretty convenient. He married the wife of his own adopted son after causing the divorce by lusting after her. He got caught having sex with his slave girl in his wife Hafsa's bed. He was allowed to have sex with his slave girls, but his wives didn't want him doing it in their own beds. So he uh, swore by Allah that he would never do it again until Allah told him to break his oath and to go back to having sex with his slave girl. Uh, if you don't see anything strange here, I, I, I'm just going to have to disagree. Muhammad's teachings are dangerous. He told his followers that women are stupid and that their testimony is only half as reliable as a man's testimony and that most of the inhabitants of, of hell are women. He told his followers that they could beat their wives into submission. He told his followers that they could rape their female captives. He told his followers to expel Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula, leaving only Muslims. He told his followers to violently subjugate Jews and Christians. He told his followers that they would eventually exterminate the Jews. And the polytheists had it even worse. He plagiarized stories from Jews, Christians, and other groups. We see this accusation raised against him over and over again in the Quran. And when we read about Dual Karnain and the sleepers of the cave and Jesus speaking as a baby and Jesus giving life to clay birds and so on, we know where these stories came from and they don't come from anything authentic. It's all plagiarism. Muhammad promoted idolatrous pagan practices like walking circles around the Kaaba and kissing the black stone. These were practices of the pagans that became part of Islam. Muhammad affirmed the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Jewish and Christian scriptures, despite contradicting those scriptures on basic fundamental doctrines. Shuaib even quoted uh, 7157 for us, where, uh, where we're told that, that we can find Muhammad in the Torah and the gospel. So Muhammad is affirming our scriptures and contradicting them. Muhammad received a revelation telling him how Allah would kill him if he were to fabricate revelations. He said that Allah would sever his aorta, and it's exactly how he died. He died saying that he could feel his aorta being severed. How did Muhammad sell all of this to his followers? By promising them an eternity of deflowering virgins in paradise. My goodness. So we can examine the prophethood of Muhammad from a lot of different directions, but no matter which direction we go, he really looks like a false prophet. The question is whether there's some great evidence that I'm missing that somehow shows he's a true prophet. And I'll turn it over to Avery and ask him uh, what he thinks about the case that our Muslim friends presented. Well, I would say that it was interesting, David. Um, we got told that uh, the we can find the criteria of what a true prophet is in 1 John chapter 4. And so I wanted to read first John a little bit, just to see what we find as a criteria of a true prophet and a true believer. So we have first John chapter two, verse 22 to 23. It says this, it says, who is the liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. This is the antichrist. He who denies the father and the son, no one who denies the son has the father. Whoever confesses the son as the father also. So according to the criteria that not we, we didn't bring this up, but uh, our, our friend Shuaib, he brought this up as a criteria for us to, to see uh, what a true prophet is. And so when we quote the Quran in chapter 19, it says that no one can come to Allah except as a slave. 
uh, in chapter nine, verses 30, 30 and 31, it talks about how uh, to, to utter that the son, that the Messiah is the son of God is, uh, is, is, is uh, uh, an abomination to Allah. It's something that's disgusting um, that the earth and the universe come to, and they shatter. They, they, they cringe at such an utterance. It's perverse, the Quran says. So according to the criteria that our Muslim friends appeal to, Muhammad would be a false prophet. Uh, in 1 John chapter 4, this is what he quoted specifically. He quoted the first five verses, which is beautiful. But if we could keep reading down, this is what it says in verse 13. It says, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us. So it's about to give us the criteria of how we know you have the spirit of God versus the spirit of error that our brother uh, mentioned earlier. It says, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So what we have is according to the criteria that our Muslim friends appointed to uh, appealed to, Muhammad is a clear false prophet according to this criteria. He denies the Father, he denies the Son, and therefore, he's a false prophet, according to this criteria. Uh, we, we had a quote in Isaiah 42, um, and, and that was interesting as well, because in Isaiah 42, it talks about how the servant, how, how God places his spirit on the servant. Now, I wonder if this is in line with Islam, whether or not Allah has a spirit, because whenever you say that, you know, that the these scriptures are appeal uh, you know uh, affirming the prophethood of muhammad you are affirming that these verses align with islamic doctrine they cannot you can't quote a, a, a scripture that goes against islamic doctrine and says yeah it's a prophecy from allah so i, I want to know from our muslim friends if it lines up that allah has a spirit that he sent down and placed on uh on muhammad it says that the servant of the lord will do miracles. Uh, according to the Quran, Muhammad did no miracles. He was just a warner. In fact, chapter 17, verse 59 says, nothing, nothing stops us from giving you the signs, doing the miracles, except the fact that the people in the past disbelieved. So Allah says, we're not going to give you any signs because people disbelieved in the past. Kind of convenient to me, but you know, that's what the verse says. So according to this, he heals the blind. He uh, brings them out of darkness. He works miracles. And we have this quote in Matthew chapter 12 that literally gives us the fulfillment of this, applying it to Jesus, right? And so this, I mean, goes against what the Quran says. It contradicts uh, the characteristics of Muhammad. So there's no way in the world this can be talking about Muhammad. Um, uh, John chapter 16 was quoted as a, a criteria to show that Jesus was speaking of the coming Prophet Ahmed, that's that's Muhammad. Now, this is what's interesting about this, um, that he, he said that Jesus will give him all that is his and he will continue his message. But according to verse 7 of John chapter 16, Jesus says that if I do not go away, um, he will not come. But if I go away, I will send him. So the question arises, did Jesus send Muhammad? Our Muslim friends have to has to answer this. Now, Here's what's interesting is that we can't fall away and say that, oh, now this is corrupted because they're saying that this John chapter 16 and John chapter 14 about the comforter is God's revelation, is Allah's revelation, and is the proof for Muhammad's prophethood. So this is the Injil that the Quran was affirming, saying that we can find the unlettered prophet written in our scriptures, in our gospel. This is the Injil that they're pointing to. So they're affirming that we actually have the Injil today and we can find God's word, his inspired word in the text. Well, according to God's inspired word in the text that they're appealing to, it says that Jesus is the one who sends the comforter. If Muhammad is the comforter and Jesus sends Muhammad, that would make Jesus the God of Muhammad, since I believe that they believe that Allah is the one that sent Muhammad. Uh, they quoted John chapter 14. Uh, ironically, uh, verses 13 and 14, where Jesus says, anyone who asks in my name, I will do it. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So they quote a verse that where Jesus says that when he goes away, believers all around the world can pray to him, can send their requests up to him. He can hear all the prayers and he knows how to answer them and has the ability to answer whatever it is that they're asking. Proving that Jesus is omni, omnipotent, omnipresent, all hearing, all knowing, all powerful, and that he's God who can answer, receive and answer prayers. 
I, I, I don't know why they would quote that, but uh, you know, that's, that's a little tough. And then continuing on about the spirit of truth who will come, it says that the world cannot see him. Uh, I believe that the world saw Muhammad. People saw Muhammad in Arabia. A lot of uh, Meccans definitely saw Muhammad and his sword. Uh, uh, it, it says that that he dwells with the disciples. It says that the disciples know him and he dwells with you and, catch this, will be in you. So according to the verses that our Muslim friends quote, Muhammad can't be seen by the world, was never seen by the world. Uh, Muhammad knew the disciples, was with the disciples presently, and then eventually when Jesus sends Muhammad back down, Muhammad will indwell the disciples and give them spiritual gifts and inspiration. Um, if you are going to quote these verses, you have a lot of problems when it comes to Islamic theology. Um, Luke 24 was quoted to show, again, some type of uh, uh, rele relevance to Muhammad's prophethood. But Luke 24 Jesus himself says that it's according to the scriptures that the Messiah should die, suffer, and rise again on the third day, and that forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name. Is this Islamic? Does this match the Islamic message? According to the Quran, Jesus was not crucified. Uh, uh, it was made that he was crucified. So if it was made to appear that Jesus was crucified and it didn't happen, yet Jesus says that he was crucified, dies by crucifixion, raises again on the third day, according to the scriptures, and Muhammad contradicts that, then Muhammad is a false prophet. So what we see here is according to our Muslim friends, their own criteria that they appeal to, Muhammad is a false prophet. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much for that opening as well. And a couple of other housekeeping things. Folks, if you haven't yet and you're enjoying this debate, hit that like button as that tells YouTube that you want to see more debates like this. Do it for yourself so the algorithm knows what to serve you in terms of what you enjoy. We're gonna read Super Chats during the Q&A, but wanna let people know, we don't just read Super Chats during Q&A. So you don't have to do a Super Chat. Sometimes when we're on limited time, we only get to read Super Chats, but we do try to read questions that are just standard questions if you tag me in chat as well. And if you haven't yet, check out the Modern Day Debate podcast. It's on every podcast app. And with that, we're going to jump into the open dialogue. Thank you very much, gentlemen. The floor is all yours. Well, I just want to open up by saying that, uh, Avery, I don't, I don't think you understood how a debate works because you were supposed to come with an opening statement and tell us about your position rather than to give a rebuttal on what we presented. So you didn't present anything. You just took five minutes to talk about what we said, but rather you didn't show anything from your end. David, on the other hand, did bring show something, but I think you you at this point already failed the debate. No, it, it's 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 pretty common, uh, Muhammad, to use part of the opening sentence. Since the burden of proof is on the person who brings the case, it's pretty it's it's a it's a matter of choice to uh, use some of the opening statement time to uh, issue a rebuttal. So yeah, but then the, there's a disadvantage because then we would have had you start and then we would have dealt with you that way. That's why it's okay. a disadvantage, and you start with the opening remark and then we do the rebuttals. Well, but no, it's okay. I, mean, if, I understand if the, how this no, just, I, Yeah, I just wanted to point out if the if the burden of proof is on you, we don't have to we don't have to make a positive case at all. We could just respond to your case. But yeah, so we did a little mix. But yeah, your point point taken. But but go ahead. What do you what do you want to talk about? Well, uh, actually, my first question is to you, David. What what is Islamic sources? What are Islamic sources? Uh, well, there are a bunch. You've got Sunni and Shia sources. So you've got the Quran and the uh, Hadith would be the main sources. Uh, then you have uh, you can have you know Tafsir and um, the Sira and so on, but yeah, I, I did kind of a mix. So to you, the word of man is the Islamic source when we're talking about theology and God. It's not the actual scripture that came down. Well, if you're talking about, I mean, if you're talking about, I mean, the vast majority of Muslims are Sunni Muslims. So you're talking between 80 and 90% of Muslims are Sunni Muslims who would, uh, take, uh, who would take, um, like Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, the uh, Sahih Sitta and, uh, basically, any any hadith that you can uh, prove is sound, they would take seriously. And then, of course, you have the uh, the sirah. But yeah, I'm just I'm just this is if we're if we're making a case about Muhammad, we have to go to the historical sources. If we want to, I mean, put, put it this way: if we don't have historical, historical sources, sources or Islamic sources, because there's a difference between historical sources and what man said and what you're considering as Islamic sources, because well, you're just appealing to the majority. At this point, because at the same time, I can present what Unitarian Christians and red letter uh, Christians uh, talk about Jesus and the same things that Christians 
who reject the letters of Paul and who gave Paul in Christianity, which is the majority, but obviously when it comes to Islamic standard, it's wrong. So if you want us to appeal to Sunnism and Shiism, which there's clear flaws in what they say, which contradicts Islamic sources, then at that point, you're making your own, uh, like, how can I say, you're making your own, like, uh, uh, case and then beating it. So it doesn't make sense when it comes down when you don't know what Islamic sources are. Well, if you want to uh, reject sources, you can just say, hey, David, that whatever you said about Muhammad there, I reject that source. And we can just say, OK, yeah, this, would, suicide, this would apply, this would apply to this would apply to uh, to the vast majority of Muslims, but not necessarily. That's you. True. I just the, the, the point. No, but my, that's how my, it goes. My in only, history, my only history point repeats is, itself. Because you talked about suicide, you talked about satanic verses, about magic spells. And then you put that as Muslim sources when they all contradict the Quran. Because literally Muslim the sources. Quran says. Those are not Muslim sources. Those Sahih are Al people Sahih writing things by that. Al That's not, not a Muslim, Muslim source. source. That is definitely not a Muslim source. That is written by people after the Quran. The Quran is the Muslim right. source, if you want to take there. All right, and that's that's fine, by the way. But I'll ju I'll just say it, it's a it's a problem either way because if we go with the sources, we have all these kinds of problems. Uh, if you reject those sources, which you can, and I've actually uh, I've actually warmed up to the idea of I, I used to think like. Wow, I treat these sources as more reliable than 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 some Muslims who are criticizing them. Uh, but yes, I've seen that there are problems with uh, with some of these sources, even though the vast majority of Muslims still believe in them. But I wanted to say, even if you reject these sources, there's a problem because if we're asking whether Muhammad is a prophet, it kind yeah. of helps. It kind of helps to know who we're, we're who we're talking about who we're investigating if we don't have reliable historical sources on him then we don't know what we're talking about and you could just say any any sort of random person is a, is a true prophet oh by the way so uh, your, the, your your criteria your criteria of measuring who jesus is is going back to the bible but when it comes down uh, like to the gospels but when we're going to come to down to the criteria of muhammad we're going to go by what the jews said about muhammad i'm talking about like people like abu huraira and all the other friends that people put on a pedestal because they were forced to put on a pedestal but said contradicting remarks about muhammad and they said things that god the word of god said that muhammad did not do so when muhammad says that disbelievers say that you are cursed and you're a magician and that you are possessed then they go say oh muhammad was possessed so for people to repeat the lie just like how you guys repeat a lie this has been something that's evident in history that carries on time over time over time after the first 50 to 100 years after a major prophet appears Someone comes around, tries to subvert the religion. This happened with every Abrahamic religion, including yours, when you try to, uh, when like when Avery wants to conflate what is mentioned as a son in the Bible, but then they want to make it as a begotten son when David was mentioned as a son, but he's not the begotten son of God. But when you want to come back and you want to throw sources of what man said, rather than show me in the Quran where Muhammad is not a prophet, because you haven't done that, you haven't quoted the Quran. Um, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Avery. Yes. So, so uh, Muhammad, so the, the Muhammad that's described in the Hadith, would you say that this Muhammad that this, that's described in the Hadith that has these, these suicide attempts, that has these, um, you know, spells casted on him, bewitchments, uh, satanic verses, that this would be a false prophet? The person that's mentioned in the Hadith is not the prophet that we follow. Right. So would you consider if, if, if Sunnis are appealing to that, that's Muhammad, that 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 would be a false prophet, and that's described. Avery, if you want, if if you would like to debate Sunnis, we can bring you Sunnis. No, oh, he's, no asking, I'm, I'm, he's asking you a question. I, I understand that, but but the question that he's presenting it said, if I say, oh, the prophet in the books that you're quoting is a fake prophet, then you're going to try to apply that back to me. Oh, you see, he might not believe it, but he's the fake prophet of everyone. I'm being very clear. The prophet that you're quoting is not the, the topic of the debate. The topic of the debate is Prophet Muhammad, who brought the Quran. Uh, we're talking about the Quran. We're not talking about Sahih Bukhari. We're not talking about Sahih Muslim because we're saying the word Sahih, but they're not Sahih. They have no authentic authenticity, nor do they have any any standing on the day of judgment. I'm not going to appeal to a man just like how you appeal to a genocidal genocidal maniac, crazy psychopath named Saul the Apostate that wanted to kill a bunch of Christians, and they came back and said, "Oh, well, I." talk to jesus and jesus is the son of god so now you have to believe me we don't follow the same kind of criteria so please if you want to talk about the debate of prophet muhammad let's stick with the quran please so so okay so this this one i'm, I'm confused about i don't know why you couldn't answer the question it, it's very simple because we're bringing up uh islamic sources and you say that you reject these islamic sources which is fine so i'm asking you simply uh, according to these islamic sources or these sources you say is by men in the Muhammad that's described in these sources, you're saying it's fake, you don't follow that, whatever, that's that's not the guy that's in the Quran. 
So would that be a false prophet in these hadith narrations? Is that a false prophet? Yes or no, bro? Simple. The, the one, the one in the hadith sense. is not the one we use, does it? Um, uh, so is the one in the hadith a false prophet? That's all I want to know. Why are we talking about him? We don't that use that prophet. Him. Let's talk about the prophet we are here for. Don't ask us about a prophet we are not here for. What kind of question is that, Avery? No, so, he's, so he's, uh, we, I, I we are like, we are look let's listen. We are here for a prophet of the Quran. If you want to justify your means by proving he's a false prophet, go to the our our book of authority. That is the Quran. Go to that book and prove to me where he's a false prophet or he's not a prophet. Don't go to other sources. We are not here to represent well, other sources. No, well, but notice, the Quran. Sh Shuaib, notice notice what you just said. We're we're here to talk about the Quran, not other sources, and yet you repeatedly re appeal to other sources. You you try to show them from the Bible. Uh, so if you can go to outside sources, no. why can't we go to uh, other no, sources? No, I'm debating. I'm debating with Christians here. So no, I we're have Muslims. To... Good. So when yeah. I'm debating with you, I have to use your book of authority and my book of authority. Let's not go to other books which are not presented on the table. No, so if you want, if you if you want to talk about the Hadith, we can bring you Sunnis and sectarians, okay, who attach things to God that are not from God for you to have these ridiculous debate that go no Exactly. But if exactly. you want to talk Simple. about Prophet Muhammad, we're going to talk about your book, right, which is the Gospel, the Old Testament, and the New Testament, right, and we're going to talk about our book. We can define what a prophet is from the Quran because God clearly defines what a or prophet is from the Quran. The prophets are sent as warners and uh, and bring t clear tidings. And they yeah. get a book, missionaries, they get a book for God to judge between the people. Prophet Muhammad did that. But you will not take the definition that's in our book. So we have to uh, show from your own sources, your sources that you believe in, that he is a prophet. But when you're going to come to us and say, hey, look, Harry Potter, this is his definition of what a prophet is. Well, you guys have to believe that. No, I'm not talking about Bukhari or Muslim or Tabari or all these people that have absolutely nothing to do with the word of God. So and it's that's very why, simple. And that's why, yeah, and that's why Avery was, was asking. Like if someone came and said, hey, I believe in Jesus, but he's a Jesus who was an alien from another planet and he, uh, he, uh, he, he, he tortured people for fun and, and did all these things and so on. And you say, Hey, do you believe in that Jesus? We say, no, we don't believe in that. Well, no, no, we don't believe in that Jesus. We don't believe so, we don't. So David, that's not, that's not, so like he's, he's asking you if the Muhammad of Sunni Islam that is based in large part on, on the Hadith would be a false prophet, even though you don't believe in that and that you believe in the Muhammad as David, defined by the Quran. I am. I'm, I'm that not, is a question. A Muhammad, let me tackle that. That is a question for the sect the Sunnis, the Shias to answer you on no, that. No, we're asking you. Yeah, but, but you're that, asking that, this, but that has, has nothing, nothing to do, to do with, with the topic of today. We're trying to understand. Okay. Do you believe in that? No, Muhammad? no. Our book of authority. No, we don't we believe told in you. Okay, that's, don't all, that's it. That's it. That's good. That's fine. We, uh -huh. don't, we don't believe in those books, nor do we believe that the character that they're representing as our prophet, and you asking that question, you are trying to paint an image, okay, where you are trying to use it against us, that, oh, the majority believe, so technically you call him a fake prophet, so it goes back to you. This is uh, uh, an evil tactic. So as God said, and we're talking about the spirit of truth, let's come back to the truth that we have and the truth that is in between you. Now, the Quran said very clearly, that God brought down the Quran, and one of its purpose is to show the things that the children of Israel used to differ in. So there was a lot of problems that happened by the children of Israel because they wrote things down and said that it's from God when it's not from God. For example, in the Old Testament, they say that Aaron worshipped the calf or built a calf for them to worship. The Quran is saying no. He freed the prophet from such a thing. Okay, Just like now, in the children of Israel, they say anyone who is crucified has a curse from God. He's damned by God. He is not a person of holiness, whoever is crucified. And then you go in the New Testament and say Jesus was crucified. So God was clearing his name saying, no, he was not crucified. And there was no damnation on the Messiah of God. That's so, why we want so to stick to the brand and not to, talk about nonsense. Just to, just to clarify, so you're appealing to scriptures that you regard as uh, false and, uh, and flawed. And you're appealing to those as your case that Muhammad is is a true prophet but you reject them as corrupted but wait let, let me uh, let me answer that uh we just we just came here why are you pushing down a claim on us we never made did you he hear just, us personally it, made a claim? It, it, it sounded like it sounded like he was saying that the quran is coming to correct things from the uh 
uh, and, and that the Quran, so in the, in the gospels, which you guys quoted to show that Muhammad is a prophet, it says that Jesus died by crucifixion. He's saying that the, the Quran came to correct that claim. So that would mean that our sources are wrong, but you're appealing to sources that you say are wrong to show that Muhammad is a, a true prophet. So uh, I'm just saying that's, that's a, uh, that's a little weird saying, Hey, we don't believe no, in that source. That source but your, 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 that. your book, your book of authority is made up of uh, 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 man made uh, concept and then godly concept as well it's not only the words of god entirely we have men words of men inside a book which you can testify to that okay how do you distinguish between the words of god that you're appealing to to show that yes. muhammad was a prophet and the words of men that you reject as flawed and corrupt the, the criteria is clear just like the verses i quoted with which uh, avery misquoted a lot of things i said out of context now if you take words of god words of god should be able to be confirmed well, the words of God are confirmed by each other as always. For instance, if we take a criteria of a prophet based on what the Quran gives you, it has to fit in every criteria which was in the past. So if I go to your book of authority and I can assess verses which falls in the same criteria, that shows that this is the criteria God has actually uh, embedded in, into us. Now, if you go and tell me that if I go to your Bible and I think your Bible is false and I'm trying to use it, I never said your Bible is false in the first place. So the point is, if it's false, I, then I will not even entirely go to quote any verse to make a claim there. I will just mm -hmm. take it, put it on the side and stick with the Quran. But the point is the Quran is here to confirm certain things, not entirely, certain things which are true in your book but it doesn't mean the entirety of your book is is true so that is the point we are making here. yeah so i'd like to uh, i'd like to hear from avery on this but but what i'm hearing is we say how does how do we know that muhammad is a prophet and you say well uh he, the, the quran says that he's mentioned in the bible so you go to the bible and you find things and say this that's is about muhammad said. well no no that's not what i said the, i didn't David, say the quran said. says it's mentioned in the bible no you said, the Torah. I, said you you know, I said the Bible is the book of your authority. Yeah, where you, quoted, is, you quoted seven one fifty seven. Seven one that's Quran. Yeah, Torah and the Gospel. Okay, but he says whom they found written with them and their Torah and the Gospel. Mm -hmm. Now, if right now, if we have to base this argument on the Torah of uh, the Gospel, I can strike your books down and tell you that is not the authentic books you even have. But then, yes, we have some words in your books which are from God, which I can testify to that. Yes. I can, we can't um, hear can, you, Avery. Avery. Can we not hear Avery? No. Um, I, I, what's up? Um, there you go. It'll work now. Yeah. Oh, why it keeps muting and unmuting. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. You're but, saying, but, I think you're far away from the mic, and the mic is not picking it up because it has like a little sensitive sensor. Is it, is it clear? My, can you guys hear me clearly right now? Yeah, we can hear you. Clearly. Yeah, go ahead. So, so... Um, I, I was just curious on the subject about, you know, because you guys quoted, you guys quoted John to, to, uh, you know, affirm Muhammad's prophethood. Do you guys believe that these, uh, what, these scriptures that you quoted in John are revelations of Allah? It's a criteria based on your book of authority, right? In the oh. first place, wait, it's a criteria of what a prophet is based on your book of authority, which oh, we yeah. use. But but here here Avery Avery even even if we do attest that it is a revelation from God, the explanation of what we are understanding is what being said is not aligned to what you're saying. So when for example when you're saying he does not confirm the Father, Prophet Muhammad does confirm the Father, but we don't call him the Father. I'm asking a very straightforward question: Do you believe that the verses that you quoted to affirm Muhammad's prophethood are is revelation from Allah? Yes or no? Some of it. Some of the yes. Which, which of the verses are you talking about? Be specific. That you guys quoted, you guys believe that those are revelation of Allah, correct? Which of the verses? Be the, specific ones the, the ones you quoted. The, 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 the answer I gave David was clear enough. I told him not the entirety of the your book is from God. Say but, my but, entirety. But guys, I didn't ask if my entire book is Allah's revelation. I asked uh -huh. the verses that you quoted, are yeah. those the revelation of Allah? Yes or no? The, yeah, that is the one which falls in the criteria of the Quran. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So according to the verses that you quoted, do mm -hmm. you believe Jesus sent Muhammad? What? Avery, again, I, this goes back to my opening statement. I know, I know what you're what? saying, Avery, but but I already told you this. I already yeah, told you this in the opening statement. So Prophet Muhammad. Uh, every, 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 every we cannot person. hear you. Every your 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 mic is breaking up. We can't hear your statements. But I think I understand what you're saying. So when you're you're going back to the point when he said, I will send him, as in Jesus was talking in first person. 
that Jesus sent Muhammad. But I will go back to my opening statement when Muhammad was speaking in first person. When Muhammad stood up and he said, sir, or uh, worship me, that is the straight and narrow path. We're not told to worship Muhammad. When he's saying that I am, I will forgive them and I am the most merciful, I am the most compassionate, that is Muhammad talking on behalf of God in the first person. So when Jesus, who is also a prophet, just like Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon both of them, he said, I will send him. He is speaking on the behalf of what you would consider the father. Got it. So if he's speaking on behalf of, of what I would consider the father, in that text, Jesus says, if I do not go away, I uh, uh, he will not come. But if I go away, I will send him. So are you saying that Jesus is quoting the father, saying that the father is going away, not Jesus? No, yeah, every, he, you, you mean he will send who? Are you talking about a comforter? Or are you talking about a spirit of truth? So in the verse that you quoted, Jesus says that I will send him. But according to, so now according to Muhammad, Jesus isn't really speaking of himself. He's really quoting the father. So then according to Muhammad, it's not Jesus that's going away. It's the Father that's going away who will send the Comforter. Is that right? But, so but the, the, the reference is Allah, I give. Allah, Allah's the one that's going away? You're Every, talking about Isaiah, right? No, in John chapter 16, John chapter 16, which is what Shuaib quoted, talking about the Comforter, Jesus says that I will send him. I never, I never spoke about a Comforter. Yes, you did. You quoted you, John chapter 16. You quoted John 16. And 16 verse what? Verses 12 to 13 about the comforter. Where does it, where does it mention? I, I mentioned chapter 16 verse 12 to 15. It says spirit of truth. Yeah, because uh, Jesus, Jesus says the comforter is the spirit of truth. Where? Give me a verse. Uh, so go, go, to, go, to verse, go to verse 7. Hold on. Let's, uh, let's uh, actually pull it up together. Go to verse 7. Are you going to quote 16 verse 7? Uh, yes, it's the same passage. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't say that then. So let, let's see. Let's okay, see. I can read it. It absolutely does. Yeah. <clears throat> so, nevertheless, I tell uh -huh. you the truth. It is uh -huh. to your advantage that I go away. For uh -huh. if I do not go away, the comforter, the paraclete, will not come to you. Uh -huh. But if I go, I will send him. Yeah, where does it say spirit of truth in that verse? Uh, let, let, me, let, let me let me let me break it okay. down here because I, what, no, 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 I, I, no this is this is all one passage 14 through 16 are all one are all one passage so in in chapter 14 verse 16 and he said now i will ask the father and he will give you another advocate or comforter to help you and be with you forever the spirit of truth that's verse 17 the spirit of truth and then you go down um, and then he says that, so notice he says the comforter is the spirit of truth. And then in verse 26, wait, 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 says, in, in which verse do you, are you saying that the comforter is the spirit of truth? Yes. Verse, Tell me which verse, which verse okay. are you saying that? Let's cross it. John, which verse? Cha John chapter 14, verses 16 to 17. And I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate or comforter. That's what's translated as comforter, the, par the paracletos, the paraclete, to help you and be with you forever the spirit uh -huh. of the spirit of truth. So Jesus, it says even even which Bible are you reading? Which version are you reading? It says even the spirit of truth. It doesn't say the comforter. You can say the even, you can say even the spirit of truth. If you're well, reading well, one King second, James, one second, guys. I have a question. If somebody says that God, as or a person who is a Christian, turns away from the church, no longer believes in God, did God did he did God leave him? Did the what spirit of God mean? leave him? No, I'm asking you a simple question. If someone turns away from the religion, can't you say that God left him? No, no, not at all. He no. you, you've so never what? said the fact that this guy has turned away from God or God has left him. He is no longer in the presence of God. So no. it does not need to be a metaphysical explanation of what Jesus is saying here. Is that I have to leave. Is that the grace of God has to leave. The, 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 the remembrance of God has to leave. Or the people being uh, uh, like... Uh, the people being submissive to God, that notion had to leave. For Wait, God you're, saying, to you're, saying that when, you're saying that when Jesus says, I leave, he's talking about all these other things? I mean, no, the, could, he, he's could, the, the entire Jesus the, spoke about the, this. Jesus dude, spoke this, in parables is, the whole time. Yeah, this is making no sense. He the, the entire passage starts off with him telling his followers, I'm going away and you're sad because I'm going away. But I want you to know that it's good for you that I'm going away because then I will send the comforter. 
And so this entire passage is about him being crucified and, and resurrected. And you're saying, no, he might be talking about, we know exactly what he's talking about. It's, it's, there's nothing confusing here about but what guys, he's talking about. But, but guys, uh, let me chime in here. You see that paracletos is different from the spirit of truth. Jesus says the, the Jesus says the Jesus says the paraclete is this. It doesn't say. It doesn't say the paraclete. You quote at chapter fourteen, verse sixteen to seven. It doesn't say. And I let me quote. There. And I will ask the Father, and uh -huh. He will give you another uh -huh. advocate to help uh -huh. you and be with you forever, the uh -huh. Spirit of Truth. And, 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 According. We'll have to figure it out later. I think it is true that if somebody else is speaking, Avery's like not able to start. The, his mic won't send any uh, message. So, Avery, if you had something, I wanted to give you a chance to say it. Yeah. Am I good now? Yeah. Uh, and okay. We'll, we'll yeah, go right that, that, to you, uh, Shuaib, right after. That's weird. Yeah, that's, that's weird. So, so, yeah. So, you literally have the verse where Jesus explicitly says, that the comforter, the paraclete, is the spirit of truth. And then you also have in John 15, verse 26, he says this, but when the comforter comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth, who comes out of the Father, he will bear witness about me. Dude, there's Wait, no way around say, this. Say, say that again. Say, say this again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. so okay. Jesus verse again. says, read it, so read Jesus it. Says, yeah, yeah. Jesus says that he will send mm -hmm. the comforter, the spirit of truth, from mm -hmm. the Father who Thank comes you. out of the Father. Thank so you. do you guys so do you guys believe? Do you guys believe? Do you guys believe that Jesus sends Muhammad who comes out of Allah? By the permission of whom? It, it is only father. based, Muhammad, wait. It is only based on the translation you are using. We have different versions of translations of your Bible, which doesn't translate the way you are. Reading yes, now. well, 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 hey, hey Shuai, I'm looking at the Greek right now. Uh, yes. I'm looking at the Greek right now. Yes. And it's, uh, it's exactly what it says here. I will ask the Father. He will give you mm -hmm. another advocate to help you mm -hmm. and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. I, I, I don't, like, if, no, if no, you're, no, no, no. If we're, you're we're, finding... We're talking if you're, about... If you're finding that confusing, I will ask the Father, he will give you another advocate or comforter to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. Who's the, spi Guys, the spirit of chapter, truth? Guys, chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 26, clearly tells you who the comforter is. It's the Holy Spirit, which is... Yes, uh, it's all. that's all the same. The spirit of truth is the same. same. It oh, is very good. the same. No, 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 it's yes, not look, the same. Look. He's there saying it's not big the difference. same. Oh, Guys, no, there is a big difference. Look. There is no I'm difference. Look, wait, if, maybe. Look, I do, if, hold on, I hate, no, I hate I just, to interrupt. I just, As you guys know, I like to keep things organic, but I do want to just, to be sure that we're not, we're not speaking over each other too much, is <laughs> let's jump into 30-second intervals. Okay. So I want to defer to, forgive me, brother, I'm so sorry. It's Shuaib, right? Is it Shuaib? Yes. Shuaib, okay. Shuaib, Shuaib. Your patience. Uh, we'll go to Shuaib first this time, and then we'll go right over to David. So 30 seconds, Shuaib, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So I quoted First John chapter 4, verse 1, to show the criteria of a spirit of truth according to the Bible. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, but because many false prophets are gone out of the world. Then it says, Hereby know ye the spirit of God. So you see the criteria. The spirit of God is going to be determined here. Then we know who is the spirit of truth. So every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Now, when you read downwards up to verse 6, then it tells you we are of God. He that knows God hears us. He that is not of God hears not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth from the end, the spirit of error. So by this criteria, you know the spirit of truth is a true prophet, whilst the spirit of error is a false prophet. So hereby, when you go to the verse I'm explaining earlier by telling you guys the Holy Spirit is different from the spirit of truth, chapter John chapter 14, that's verse 26. A, so that's about 60 seconds. We'll give the same to David. 60 seconds, David. Yeah, so uh, Aver already pointed out, you're, you're, you're saying, you're talking about Jesus Christ coming in the flesh, but John, in 1 John, as Avery quoted, tells you what he's talking about. He's talking about the divine son. And he says, if you're rejecting that son, you're rejecting both the father and the son. So 
John defines what he's talking about. You give it an Islamic interpretation, which doesn't fit at all. As for right here, this is not confusing. This is basic logic. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. John says in the passage, you guys quote, that's why we're going here. You guys quoted this. Jesus says, I will ask the Father. He will give you another advocate, comforter, to help you and be with you forever. Why the spirit of truth. The Father? The ad, ad, Why is he I, we, we One sec. I got to I, I give David the, the last. Uh, Sorry. Give, give, him, like give him another 15 seconds. seconds. We're not talking. Yeah, then, we'll go to you, then we'll go to you, yeah. Muhammad, once David is done with his last 15 seconds here. Yeah, don't change the subject. Jesus says the comforter is the spirit of truth. And then the comforter is the Holy Spirit. If Jesus is i mean if the comforter is the spirit of truth and the spirit of i mean and the if the spirit of truth is the comforter and the comforter is the holy spirit then the spirit is the then the spirit of god is the holy i mean the spirit of truth is the holy spirit if we're having trouble at that, at that level if, that's if, that, if that's somehow confusing then, then my goodness muhammad you got 30 or what is it what, 60 seconds muhammad uh, i don't need the full 30 seconds the spirit of truth is a spirit speaking the truth the Holy Spirit comes with the angels to cause revelation. Not everybody who has a spirit of truth speaking the truth has the Holy Spirit. And B, what does it mean that I will ask the Father? Okay, okay. So he's asking for permission. So later in the second verse that you quoted, right? The Father will send. Like I will send as in the, I ask permission and the father from the father, he's coming from the father. So the father has the priority. By who? He's coming from, coming from the father by who? One, one minute, brother, look at it. I'm asking the father and the father will send. No. So does Jesus command the father? Wait, wait, wait. Just, or does just the put, father send? So, so just, just let's, let's put it all together. You have Jesus who asked the father and he will send you another comforter. You have okay. Jesus saying that I will send you the comforter the spirit of truth from the father. So you have both the father and Jesus involved in sending the comforter. Do you believe that. that both Allah and Jesus are involved in sending Muhammad? Brother, yes. Jesus supplicated okay. for God. One listen. Jesus supplicated to God. God accepted the supplication. So I'm going to ask the father. The father said yes. So because the supplication was accepted, so it came because on behalf of Jesus, but it's only by the permission by the favor, by the permission of God. If I God said, no, there is no Muhammad. You're just so twisted in your head that you want to give victory back to Jesus. When God literally, Jesus himself right now as well is giving victory back to the Father. He's saying, so, I will ask the Father. The Father will send. So Jesus didn't send nobody. Thank you I, very I, much. Okay, so this so this is what we have here, ladies and gentlemen. We just had Muhammad admit that he does believe that Jesus was involved with Allah, partnering with Allah in sending Muhammad. That's not what I said. Partner. Now, he, never said partner. Wait, 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 he never said partner. He never said partner. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What I want to do is, whoa. what I want to do is, I want to, let's, let's we should let Avery just finish because yeah. I appreciate your guys' passion. It's, it's a much more lively debate than a boring debate. So I like it that you guys are vigorous. But I, I, let's go with 60 seconds for Avery. And then we'll give you a full 60 seconds to, I think, Shuaib, we haven't heard from you for a while. We'll give you a full 60 seconds after that if you want to correct anything that Avery said. All right, thanks. Yeah, so so I asked you very specifically, do you believe that Jesus and Allah sent Muhammad? You said yes. And then you went That's to go on, and then you went to go on and clarify what you mean that Jesus by supplication is involved because of his supplication, he's involved in sending Muhammad. My man. It says nothing about supplication. It says, I will ask the father, he will send. I will and send father. him from the father. I will send him from the father. I will send him from the father. And guess what? That Muhammad comes out of Allah. He comes out of, do you, like the, the way that this destroys oh, Islamic theology is crazy. Do you believe, please answer this for me. Do you believe that Muhammad comes out of Allah? That, that Jesus and Allah sent Muhammad from out of Allah. Do you believe that? Everything came from God and we returned to God. No, no, that's not what I asked. Do you believe that's what that you Muhammad... asked? No, I, I'm, I'm very, sp I'm, a, I'm a simple man. I, I'm a simple man. I, I gave simple you question. a very simple, did Muhammad a, come so, out of God? Yes, because everything came out of God and oh, okay. everything returns to God. I got you, I got you, I got you. All right, so but you're so twisted in your head. You're so got, twisted wait, 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 in your head. Me, you're changing me, the context of what I said. I, but you I'll, I'll rest this thing, which I'm not hold saying. Hold on, hold on, dude, 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 this, this is this is my little this is my little time, man. Give me my little time to shine. So look, 
what we have here is we have both Jesus and Allah sent Muhammad. We have what does that mean? Oh, we have Allah who sends Allah and Jesus send Muhammad, and Muhammad comes out of Allah. A stuck fully law, man. You have just left Islam. This is crazy to me. But I'm arrest this here Islam. because Listen, God, Avery, dude, Avery, dude, hold on. Avery, I, I promise don't tell me about leaving. Uh, I hate to stop the screen share. Just that if we do the screen share, it scrambles the screen on me. We'll definitely Shuai will give you a chance to share your screen. Oh, and I, I loved it. I, I loved it. It was right on there. It was right on the screen. <laughs> we can, we'll give you a in chance. Greek, Shuai, English and Greek. I, I think we've run out of time. Avery, and then we'll, we'll so we'll kick it yeah, over yeah. for 60 seconds to Shuai. And if you'd like to share now, go ahead, Shuai. So this is this is the verse because all, it's, all, it's all about perspective. John chapter 15, verse 26. Now, when you check where I'm highlighting, this is it comes with the Greek. It says, When when the uh, uh the this helper, that's the Paracletos, whom I will send to you from their father. Then there is a comma in between. Then it says the spirit of truth who from the father, who goes forth from the father. Listen, there is a difference here. When Jesus said the, the helper whom he will send, it is different statement from saying the spirit of truth who goes forth from the father. You see two different separate instances here. It is not like Jesus sending the same spirit of truth. No, no, is Jesus saying the spirit of truth is still the, the paracletos. I don't know which kind of English you're trying to present to us here, <laughs> but you are twisting words clearly. And the verse is in front of us. And it says, this spirit of truth, he will bear witness concerning me. So tell me how this, if you say it's the Holy Spirit, how does the Holy Spirit bear witness of Jesus? Bring us the evidence and show us how does he do that? Um, it's it's literally right there on the screen. <laughs> um, I will, whom I will send. <laughs> Guys, this is all this. This is this is all the Jeff same passage. Guys, I don't I don't know how to even have a debate if words off the page are are too confusing. Yeah. Jesus well, David, says, David, Jesus. David, hey, wait, 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 wait. I, I, wait. I, this, we didn't interrupt. We didn't interrupt. Time. Time. I didn't interrupt. Yeah. There's a, about another fifty seconds from David, and then I promise we'll go right to you, uh, Muhammad, for sixty seconds as well. All right. So just to recap, I have no idea why this is confusing. I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate or comforter to help uh, to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. Comforter is the spirit of truth. Same chapter, a few verses later, but the comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I said to you. Notice Jesus is saying the father sends. But then in chapter 15 and chapter 16, as Avery pointed out, Jesus says, I will send. It's the father and the son together sending the Holy Spirit, just as at Jesus' baptism, it's the Father and the Holy Spirit who together identify Jesus. These passages are thoroughly Trinitarian. You can't understand them apart from a doctrine of the Trinity. And <laughs> you're, you're finding Muhammad somehow in these passages. That's okay. But if, if Muhammad is sent by Allah, and the Father and Jesus are the ones who send the Comforter. If you're saying that's Muhammad, then fine. Muhammad is sent by the Father and the Son, which would make the Father and the Son Allah. We'll kick it over, Muhammad. David. Really quick, I just want to do a quick, couple of quick housekeeping things. First is that right after this debate, so this is a short debate, folks. Stick around for all of it. Right after, during this same live stream. So you're already here for the second debate. You're at the right place. We're going to have a second short debate on whether or not Jesus was a Muslim or is a Muslim. And I want to be sure that you know about that. We will re-release each of these debates within 24 hours. My hope is to release the first one tonight as a standard upload. We're going to chop them into two and then release them as their own standalone debates here on Modern Day Debate. But we're going to kick it over to Muhammad. There's one last housekeeping thing I was going to say, but go ahead, Muhammad, and I'll remember it. Sure. Quick question. So when you guys said that, which I didn't mean it in the way that you said it, that Jesus' supplication was part of the process of the helper being sent. You said that that was me associating Jesus to God and that I left Islam, right? No, that's not what I said. What I said was, is that you left Islam when you admitted that you believe that both Allah and Jesus were involved in sending Muhammad. You also left Islam when you said That's that Muhammad comes said. out of Allah. 
Avery, so, Avery, yeah. I already told you something that's very simple. It's a yes or no. I said, Jesus is part of the process of where the helper was sent because of supplication. And you said that I left Islam because I associated Jesus to God. Now, you, on the other hand, you're saying that Jesus is associated to God. So whatever the concept of un like unifying God or Unitarian understanding of a monotheistic God, you yourself admit that associating Jesus to God is not something that's supposed to be done in Islamic standards. One, there is a verse that we repeat often when we're in trouble, as God told us to say in the Quran, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We are from God and we will return to God. We are from God and we will return to God. Where did Muhammad come from other than from God? So yes, he did come from God. I didn't leave Islam for saying that. And no, Jesus was part of the process because he was looking for, out for humanity later because idiots that want to lie and twist and say that God has a begotten son and the mother of God and all this nonsense, God sends another refresher for the Gentiles and for the rest of the world. A billion people living now, nine billion people in total, understood the truth that's in the Quran and they could see the similar truth that's in your gospel and it's in the Torah. So please, brother, if you don't know what Islamic sources are, yet alone you're going to come tell people that left Islam when you don't even know what a monotheistic religion is. We'll kick it over to Avery or... Avery, did you yeah, have yeah, something? Yeah, 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 yeah I, want to, I want to ask him something. So you believe that we all come from God. Here's my question specifically. I'm very specific. I'm not asking you if we come from God. Do you come from... Do you come out of Allah? Yes or no? Well, I don't understand your semantics. If someone is coming so, from someone, he came out of someone. So you, so, you, so, you so, so you believe that we all come out of Allah? If you're created from God, where did you come from? I'm just asking, civilly. Do you, because because Adam was created from dust and clay and things of this nature and he breathed into him, right? Okay, but the dust, where did that come from? Okay, so it's it's the earth that he creates. Did, did the dust okay, come so from out of Allah? Okay, so who created the earth? Wait, wait. Where, did, who created did, the matter? Wait, wait, wait. Simply, simple, simple. Did, did, the, did the dust of the earth or did the earth yeah. come out of Allah? Oh, okay, so matter is not from God. God, there is no, matter no, no, on the side, and God the, is somewhere answer, else. Please answer the question: Did the dust or Avery, the earth or matter retarded. does it come from? Uh, does it come out of Allah's own essence? Everything oh, uh, comes uh, from God's essence. Okay, so everything uh, we, is Allah. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Pantheism, baby. <laughs> Yo, man. Okay, so uh, thank you, thank you for answering. I, I appreciate it. So he's look. correct. He's correcting us on what monotheism is. <laughs> oh man. So so this is what we have, ladies and gentlemen. What we have that so is reality. Far. Do you understand oh, oh, that? Please, one, please, one second. Please, one second. It's, one it's second. my time. Avery, talk about time. Hold on. We're huh? gonna go just a little bit. Uh, Avery, we'll give you fifteen seconds more, and then we're gonna go to Muhammad for a full sixty seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we have, ladies and gentlemen, is that all everything is part of Allah. Everything comes out of Allah. Everything is something of some things of Allah's essence. This man has committed the highest shirk innovation I've ever seen in oh. my life. I don't even know if you if I'm dating Muslim if I'm uh, debating Muslims right now. I, I do not, not dating me. You're not dating me. One B. You're not, you're, okay? you're not my. There type. is no power. A... There is no power. There is no power. I, I know your type is of a liars and losers. There oh. is no power except from God. You understand that? There is no power except from God. The reality is God. So whatever you're seeing is an essence that came from God, that comes back to God, that God will judge. Everyone has their individualism that is responsible for their free and, choice and everybody that God gave part them. Of But I want to give my time back to Shaib because it's Shaib's turn to us. It really was I don't know. Time, I know I'm not your type. I'm too beautiful. And I know Shaib is not your, your type because he's too intelligent. So here you go. They are, they are playing the worst of semantics here at the moment. Don't, don't mind every. Anyways, every you talk about you, you talk about spirits. Uh, Muhammad never had spirit on him or whatever. But that's that's what you said earlier on. If you go to Quran chapter 17, verse 85, it clearly mentioned the ruhu, which is the spirit, right? And Quran chapter 16, verse 102 talks about the spirit, the Holy Spirit bringing down the book, the Quran to the prophet. And Quran chapter 58 verse 22 clearly says God supports the believers with the spirit from him, right? And Quran chapter 42 verse 52 clearly tells us that Muhammad was inspired with the spirit from God. So if you are saying Muhammad never had any spirit of God with him, I don't know where you got your point of view from. But regardless, also, when I quoted my verses, you try to quote some of the verses of the Quran as a rebuttal, trying to say... Uh, what, what I'm saying is not in line with what makes Prophet Muhammad a true prophet. So you even went to the extent by quoting chapter 9, verse 31 to 32. 
uh, you 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 went and quoted First uh, John chapter four verse thirteen concerning Antichrist. I'm not here to tell you about Antichrist or anti this. I'm just giving you a criteria which says that if any spirit which actually testify that Jesus came of flesh is of God, which Muhammad did, we have verses to boast of that clearly where Muhammad actually testified that Jesus came of flesh. We are not here to give you a criteria of who is an antichrist, who is not an antichrist. The criteria is who is the spirit of truth. That is a true prophet to give you the words of God and guidance. That's all. So I don't know why you went out of the order. My turn, yeah. James. Okay. Yep. Go. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to, to, to recap here. And this is really an illustration of the entire problem here. You're saying, ah, we're not here to talk about the Antichrist. No, you cited 1 John, Shuaib. You cited 1 John and said, aha, this confirms Muhammad. These, these, same, these same book, when it's uh, the same book, says that if you deny that Jesus is the son of the father, then this is the spirit of Antichrist. So that's what you, we're just going to what you listed as your criteria. Then you go to the book of John, where, I mean, Jesus, the chapter, I mean, one, the book starts off by identifying Jesus as the word who was God, who became flesh. You get to chapter 14, where Jesus calls himself the way, the truth, and the life, titles of Allah. Jesus says First that person. when he goes away, he can answer our prayers. Jesus says it's good because he can go way and where he can answer prayers and he will go to the father and the father and the son together will send the comforter you say muhammad is the comforter which would mean that muhammad is sent by the father and the son and since muhammad was sent by allah this would make father and son together Allah, and we're just saying, if, you, if, if, you're, if you're claiming that Jesus is involved in the way he says, in the passage that you guys quoted with sending Muhammad, uh, <laughs> just, David, it just, David, it David, just David. sounds Muhammad, very different from what we're familiar with David, in Islam. David, Muhammad, Muhammad is involved in my guidance, even though I'm getting guided by God. Ooh. So I'm not saying that Muhammad is the one who's guiding me. Partner. I'm saying God is guiding me, and you don't even know what partnership is. I have a sure. question for you to understand sure. what partnership is. That's exactly what you do. I'm glad you understand the concept. Sure. But now, did Abraham, did Abraham, would he bow down to a son of God? What about Isaac and Ishmael, uh, Isaac and uh, Jacob? Would they also admit, if they were alive today, that Jesus is the begotten son of God? And they would you know have what? to sit there and worship Jesus? You know what? I, I love this question, David. I, I This is actually, you know what? You're not far from the kingdom for asking that question. I, I don't even think that it was you that, 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 got inspired with that question. I think the father of, in heaven told you to ask this question because this is beautiful. Because what we have is in John chapter eight, Jesus literally says that Abraham saw him, met him and was glad when he saw him, worshiped him, adored him and bowed to him. This? this is, this is John chapter eight. This is John chapter eight. And this is the response of the Jews is, wait, you're not even 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? You want to know what his response is? Before Abraham was I am. I love that you keep quoting verses that point to the deity of Christ, the sovereignty of Christ, and how Muhammad is a false prophet. Dude, you're helping us. It's three against no, but, one right but, now, but, man. But here's here's the thing. So you have like four imams, right? Uh, your, your four books. How come it's only in John 8? Is there any other books that say that Abraham you're the You're the guys who we're quoting John because you guys quoted John. <laughs> we quoted that first. We quoted that. The, the point is like what the what point you are this? making here is guys let's let's take let's take so, so just to be clear you guys can quote a source but we can't quote the exact no, same let's, source let's back stay, to you let's stay on the topic like you're going you're drifting remember the topic is based on about muhammad, muhammad about, brought it up then, muhammad your your partner muhammad brought up abraham yes, avery uh, responded avery responded and you say no no no, no don't go there no no <laughs> that's I'm not what seeing, i said that's not what i said i said is what there I'm any other is, from the gospel saying the same thing sure i believe just answer. one person yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. L what I'm saying is, let's stick to the topic because we are we are drifting. The main topic has to do with Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, and not Jesus. So, we're like, we are drifting away. Whilst our second debate has to do with Jesus instead. So let's let's fix the focus so that we don't lose the the the, the, the train of what we are the chain of what we are discussing. What I'm trying to say here is because every is like the, the game of semantics you are trying to play is you you playing with words. In such a way that if you you quote John chapter eight right now, I can ask you give me one verse from the Old Testament which Abraham ever made reference of Jesus. Can you? Is this a real question? Yes, it's a real question. 
Oh, uh, this is easy. Now, no, Jonas that he, he mentioned Christ. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah, give well, me oh, where oh, he no, mentioned no, Christ. No, no, stop, 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 okay. stop, stop. Because I, I, that's this is not the game that I'm playing here. So notice, one, you accused us of going off the subject, and now you're you're going yeah. way off the subject. Oh, yeah, then, right, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wait, 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 Avery, Avery, Avery. Then he said, then he said, hey, let's get away from the topic of Jesus and get back on Muhammad. <laughs> so where did Abraham talk about Jesus? Wait, what? <laughs> no, no, wait. Before I did that, no, no, I say if that is no, the no, game stop, you are stop, going please, to play, it's, it's my no, time. Wait, it's my let, time. Let, let me make a statement before wanna... you talk. It's, I'll give you a really, is, is really there, is there any is there any argument for Muhammad for Muhammad here? I don't know. I'll give you a really I, I, I quick response. For me, Shuaib, for me, I, I want to give uh, no, no, no. I, I mean, give, for if, Muhammad, if Shuaib had a last or really quick pithy point he wanted to make, I want to give it to you. Yeah, yeah. My last statement. I only said if that is the game you are here to play, then then I followed up with the question. I'm not trying to tell you answer that. Then you said, is that a real question? So my point is, if you want to play that game, we can go there. That's what I meant. If it's not by force for you to answer, if you want to answer, fine. But that's not the game I want us to play. If you want us to play, let's go. That's that's what I meant by that. So I am saying let's stick to the topic of true Muhammad as a true prophet instead of drifting to something else. Okay. okay what, yeah. what, what do you what do you want to talk about as far as Muhammad being a true prophet? I actually I actually have something, David. I, I actually okay. have something because um if we're if we're moving on, okay. So I, I actually have something. So the, uh, if we're talking about Muhammad being a true prophet. This we um, hold on. What I, this might be a good time to jump into Q and A. I, I'm okay if you, but I just we. This is actually like we're right at the cusp of tour. I don't know if opening up a brand new topic, if we're going to wrap up the dialogue. But if you want, I'll defer to you guys. I I want us to continue this. What yeah. You what's your yeah? What what do you what are you okay. saying? And then they can respond to it. You got it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. So so uh, Muhammad in the Quran gives us a a, a falsifiable you know test basically um it, it says that if you know this book is not from allah you'll find in it many contradictions chapter 4 verse 82 uh you'll find many of them in there um so we have in the quran where the quran over and over and which is why i believe that these these uh gentlemen are quranists these people they, they only follow the quran and the quran alone because the quran doesn't need any outside help you have verses like chapter 6 verse 114 uh, of chapter 11, verse 1, chapter 12, verse 111, that says that the Quran is fully detailed and explained. Its verses are explained in detail. And it that is it is a detailed explanation of all things and a guide and a mercy for those who believe. So the Quran makes a claim about itself that it's fully detailed, fully explained, no confusion. It's clear. You don't need any outside sources at all. Okay. For who? Uh, according to the Quran. For who? Okay. According to the Quran. For who? For, uh, according to the Quran. I think so, he's so this is for who, like the reader? Yes, for who? Uh, 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 whoever's reading the Quran. No, know? he doesn't say that. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go this So the, we'll the, this Quran, the Quran isn't complete and detailed. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> he yeah. has to be specific with the verse. So for who is it explained okay. and detailed? For who? It's, it just says it. In, ch in chapter for six, verse, no. in chapter six. In chapter six, verse fourteen, does it say for but who? Be specific with the verse. Does it say yeah, for the yeah? In chapter six, verse for fourteen, does it... or for the believers? Yeah. In chapter six, verse fourteen, verse one fourteen, does it say for who? Yeah, I'm asking you. You are making the claim. Yeah, so let's, I, I can pull it up really quick. Let's see. Okay. Pull I, it up. I, I, don't, I don't think that I don't think that six one fourteen says for who specifically, but yeah, it does. Actually, but go ahead. It does. I mean, if it does, yeah, yeah, you know, does. cool. No, no, go ahead. Read it. I want you to read it out loud for everybody okay, good, know, good, good, who would good. know that it's the truth from the book. Go ahead. All right. Awesome. 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 Let's get here. Yeah. Let's get here and see. All right. Let's see if it says for who. Um, yep. Shall I seek other than Allah uh, for judge when he it is who revealed to you the scripture fully explained? Okay. Those unto whom we gave the scripture know that it is revealed from your Lord. So be not of the waverers. So uh, if, if your so your guys' point is that this is specifically it's specifically clear for believers, for people who are giving for them believers, work, yeah, and those are believers. Don't all right, cool. Believers. I'm cool with going with that. Mm -hmm. So if if it's clear for believers, then it's fully detailed, understood, and explained according to belief. Like if you're a believer, you should have no questions. It should be perfectly clear. There's no missing details. Okay. So I have a question about this. In chapter 17, verse one, it talks about this servant that he um you know, that he took by night and to, to from one mosque to the other and stuff like this, right? And he's blessed. My question is, who was that servant and where did he take him? The context of the chapter 17. Mohammed, I will take that. 
the context of chapter 17, verse 1, uh, this is where context plays a major role. You read from verse 1 to verse 7, tells you clearly he's talking about the children of Israel. And first of all, that is Moses. Peace be upon him. So he says, glory be to the one who made his servant travel at night from the sacred masjid, that is a separate mosque, to the farthest mosque. So if you say from where and to where, he took him to the farthest mosque, around which we have blessed in order to show him some of our signs. Indeed, he is the hearer, the seer. For we gave Moses, and we gave Moses the book and made it a guidance for the children uh, of Israel that do not take a representative besides me. So when you take the, the, the notion whereby God used the word to show, like to show signs, to show something, just as he gave, for example, Prophet Muhammad in Quran chapter 4, verse 105, concerning what he has shown him. So it is by the book when he showed, he, as he showed Moses as well. So that represents as a guidance for the children of Israel. So the context is clear. It is about Moses and it's about the children of Israel. Okay. Yeah. Where did he take them? To the father's mosque. Where is that? That's what the verse says. It doesn't yeah, give a specific location because that is not the point of the context there. Yeah. No, no, no. So the Quran says that it's fully detailed and explained. That is the detail. God. And you and, and you said let's he took it from, from, one let, second. Just let, to hear, let, let's have Avery fully flesh it out. And I promise we'll give you a full good amount of time to respond. And then we've got to go into the Q&A just because we are over for this first. Well, we're yeah. almost over for this first debate and we haven't even done questions yet. So go ahead, Avery, and then we'll go yeah. to Muhammad. And then we do have to actually jump into the Q&A. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So you said that it's perfectly detailed and explained for the believer. So that means as a believer, you should be able to give me the details that the Quran is talking about. It should be have the details there. So when you when it says that he took them from the sacred mosque, to the furthest mosque, my question is, where is that? Okay, so Avery, the book is detailed for the believers. So the names of the prophets of the wives are not mentioned here. There's other details about the prophet's life is not mentioned here. It's because it's irrelevant to the believer. The actual location and the mosque that is being questioned in question here, it is not rev relevant to your faith. So it's detailed in a sense where we know what happened with Moses and why he moved Moses from one mosque to the other mosque in the sense that he wanted to show him his signs. That is the, clear, the clarity and the details that a believer requires to stay on the faith. These questions that you're asking are not the details that you're, you're understanding what a believer needs. I don't need to know the name of the mosque, nor do I need to know the location, nor do I need to know where Ahad is, nor do I need to know where the uh, prophet's name, uh, the prophet's wife's names, because it's not uh, imperative it's for me on the day of judgment. Mm. It's, it's not, not part, part of, of guidance. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, by the way, Avery, notice notice that they're saying this is about Moses when 99.9% .9 of Muslims would say it's about Muhammad and the Quran claims to be clear. According yeah, to the nine, according to God, you don't follow the majority. They're, yeah. they're believers, yeah. according to they're believers, David. Don't forget. Thank God, alhamdulillah. So yeah, it's clear course. it's clear to them, David, that uh, that this is about Muhammad, according to no, those no. believers. No, no, no. They yes. no, they said they yeah yeah. So it, it's it's clear to these these guys are saying it's about Moses. So mm -hmm. they're they're yeah, so you have you have these believers just, just like, yeah, just like how ninety nine percent. No, just like how ninety nine percent of Christians. Hold, 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 no, no, really I quick. understand you're making fun of us. You're really making quick, fun really, of us. Really, really, no, 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 no. I, 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 I want to give Muhammad. No, I just, no, I because I think there was a point made against Muhammad. Yeah, I want to so give him a chance to respond. Not just yeah. I didn't just like how ninety. My wife Avery. Just like how ninety nine percent of Christians, ninety ninety nine percent of Christians say that Jesus said, "Oh, hi God, it's me again. Me, can I please remove this bitter cup from myself?" No. That's how ridiculous you guys sound. So when you're going to come to compare us to 99% of what the ridiculousness of that comes out of them, which they have no proof, you sound just like them, where you are the majority and the believers are the minority. So you can make fun as much as you want. On the day of judgment, God is going to say, show me where it says Muhammad and show me where it says that this specific mosque that 99% of Muslims that went with their own assumptions, just like you did, did. Yeah, James, yeah, so, I ju James, I just wanted to clarify what we we're saying because uh, that's not exactly what we, we weren't saying. Ha ha ha! You guys are the minority, uh, and and uh, and almost almost all people who believe in the Quran disagree with you. That wasn't the point. The point was about what's brought up earlier that the Quran claims to be clear, and yet at the same time, you guys are saying that the incredibly vast majority of the people who've ever read it 
are wrong about basics, like whether they need additional books in addition to the Quran, who the, who's being identified here in Surah 17. And so the point is, if 99.9% .9 of people who ever read the book come to the wrong conclusion from what the text is actually saying, is it really all that clear? That was the only and point. Just, and just 10 seconds right here, just, just 10 seconds, please. Uh, and the, the, the crux of this was that you guys said it's clear to the believers. So you have different sets of believers who are coming to different conclusions. This is our Bible doesn't make this claim. Your book does. So this is a problem for you guys, man. Is it consistent? If it's but, but, wait, wait, wait. Give you a let, chance let me, to respond. Me, well, hold on. First, we'll go to. It sounds like Shuai. You want to go first, and then we'll give Muhammad a quick chance, and then we've got to yeah. go to the Q and A. Yeah. So based on the verse Ivory, you quoted chapter six, verse one hundred and fourteen. We are not talking about. You didn't mention anything about clarity there. You didn't say is the book everything clear? That's not the question. Chapter 12, verse 111, I also quoted. That says everything, all things are detailed. Ch chapter 12, verse 111. What could the change? So now with the Yeah, in everything we have. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. when you quoted the verse, first of all, before I answered, you quoted chapter 6, verse 114 before quoting the other one. But you were asking for detail. Then I asked for who? Then he, specifically, you were avoiding that till we went to the believer's point. Now, a believer is taking guidance. So when it comes in terms of guidance, the book is detailed. We have every detail we need for our guidance. So that's why I keep asking you for who. But if you are trying to just base that argument on saying, since the Quran is detailed, it has to tell me the name of the wife of the prophet, the name of this place this prophet went, the name of this place the prophet was born. That's not the detail we are talking about here. Is, you have to understand the context. Just to keep it pithy. Sorry for doing this to you. But just because I want to give Muhammad a quick word, and then we do have to go to the Q&A. No, I'll, I'll let Shaiba finish his point. I mean, that's he already oh. went first. Okay, so yeah. So Avery, back to like what you're saying. The people who are assuming things, there's a presupposition and pre-understanding that is already imbued in them before they even open the book. If someone comes out of the earth and never knew any of the history or nothing and open the book and read it, he's not going to attach that to a Muhammad nor to the mosque that is in Jerusalem or the temple that's in Jerusalem. So this is where when you open the book without having these imbued understandings that people have uh, put into the religion, that people presuppose things, then you wouldn't come to the conclusions that 90% of the people come, come, come to because they did not ponder, nor did they think, nor did they give the victory back to, to the Quran. There's a prophecy that proves that Muhammad is a prophet of God, right. where the prophet said that the messenger the messenger will say that the people took this Quran forsaken. As you to... guys did, as Islamic sources, you went to all other Oof. sources except the Quran. So you proved the prophecy. To... We got work a whole like it. All right, really quick housekeeping thing, folks. I'm going to read through as many super chats as I can, but I'm not, frankly, we just have so many. I'm not going to be able to read all of them. So if your super chat doesn't get read, email me at moderndaydebate at gmail.com and I will pay you back. I'll give you a refund for it because I am sorry because we do try to do that, but I also want to get these guys out of here on time tonight. So we're going to read hey, some of them though, for sure. By the way, James, James, uh, either uh, if there could be like at the end where there's like a, a minute each or 30 seconds each or something like that to uh, sort of summarize or something like that as a conclusion, that's cool. I'm open to that. Let's just quickly, I'm going to quick run through these questions and then we'll do that and then we'll give you guys your closings followed by a quick intermission. And then folks, if you did not see it in the live chat, if you're maybe you're listening and you're just cleaning your room or something, we are going to have a second debate tonight. So that's why I'm trying to like make this really fast. And that's why I pushed us into Q&A, even though people were like, dang, this conversation is so good. And I 100% agree. But is Jesus a Muslim is coming up next. That's tonight. So like next is in this very live stream. You're already where you need to be to watch it. So this first one coming in from, do appreciate it. Anwar Stevenson. I don't know exactly what they're meaning by this. You see, if a 54-year-old... Uh, I think now they call it, uh, what is it, MAPS, uh, minor attracted person or pedo, live next door to you, would wow. he be alive? I, are they meaning, like, would you uh, allow them to live next door to you in a nice way? Is that what they're saying? <laughs> Yeah, but uh, if I if I if I had to guess, I don't think either one of these guys would be would. So even though even though most Sunni, I mean Sunni Muslims who are familiar with their sources would read that Muhammad uh, had a child bride. If these guys are rejecting Bukhari, I don't think they'd uh, I don't think they'd believe that. Yeah, when God is saying for an orphan, for them not to even get their possession until they reach the age of marriage and they have to have maturity in their head to get their possession. I'm not going to make a six-year-old uh, uh, take a responsibility of a house. Obviously, that's wrong. 
It's obviously that's wrong. Even their own books, their, even their own books, the sources that they claim you can place Aisha at 18 years old and above because of the time she was playing with the dolls when a certain revelation came up. But you guys, as most Islamophobes want to talk about, how a blessed man that changed and revolutionized the life of many people, you want to label him as a pedophile. Even though your books, that the ones that you are scared of, put a lot of prophets as pedophiles as well. Which one? So it's a nice attack. That's a lot. Isaac. Isaac, Isaac, where, 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 where? <laughs> show us, show us, chapter and verse, chapter and verse, everyone. No, 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 Isaac. Ch chapter is, and verse. It's just like how they're twisting verses. Chapter, chapter, verse. chapter and verse. Chapter and verse is that easy. Chapter, chapter book yeah. such and such, chapter David, such and such, I had this verse conversation with you in the last chapter and verse. Where they put chapter her and verse. three years old. I understand you have this chapter and verse. Head. That's right. I, I hate to do this. Again. I can't give us chapter I, and verse. I, I, no, I hate to do this, topic, but please. if we're going to go into like, I just we've already kind of covered extra ground beyond the question. I just want to go to the next. He question. went into that. He Josh, went into that and lied. I Joshua. Had to correct it. Joshua Wooden says Islam side study what Christians believe. Major straw man also does Islam not also believe a trinity as in Allah, Muhammad, and the eternal speech of Allah, the Quran. Also, some schools of Islam say that swearing is haram. I can read through each of these if you need a reminder. We'll start with that first one. They say, <clears throat> Muhammad, doesn't Islam have a trinity of its own, namely Allah, Muhammad, and the eternal speech of the Allah in the Quran? If God wanted to destroy Jesus and his mother and everyone in the world, he would. And if God wanted to destroy Muhammad and his companions and everybody in the world, he would. Muhammad is not free of God, nor can he control God. So he's not an attached in a trinity with God, and God is free of everybody. So stop uh, putting lowering God's uh, grace and dominance. Thank you. They also asked, also some schools of Islam say that swearing is haram. Is this true? <laughs> that's, the, that's just a school of thought. It has nothing to do with the Quran. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Chris L says, a Muslim tried to tell me the Bible in Thessalonians 2.11 claims God lies just like in Allah lies in the Quran. He then tried claiming that also the Quran does not say Allah lies, but just simply plans. I'm going to read Thessalonians 2.11 in case it's useful. I want to ask my Christian friends, does God lie? Question. It's, it says, therefore God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false. That's 2 Thessalonians yes. To, yeah, you way. have a, you find the same thing in the Old Testament that when people are rebelling. Uh, matter of fact, I think you can see it in the world in the world around us today that that mm -hmm. people can be punished with a delusion as a form of punishment uh, for rebellion. But uh, but but James, um, if you're saying if you're saying that uh, if you're saying that there's a there's short time, then uh, some of these, some of these questions are going to be relevant to the topic and, and others aren't like, like they're asking about, uh, they're also asking about Allah being the best of planners. And it's some people say that's the best of deceivers and so on. So, but, uh, we're, we're talking about whether Muhammad's a true prophet. So I don't know. I mean, yeah. maybe none of them, but it seems like some of the questions are, are going off on, on other issues. Yeah. They that's are off, fair. They're off, off topic. Because I, I know they're going to ask us 12 times about Aisha. Sauce mm. Me Down says... Mm. I'd skip it. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes so, so stuff like those. If you guys are saying you reject the sources, I would say skip those. Thank you. Gotcha. Some of these are... Sauce Me Down says, Will you ever get our Christian dichotomy correct before interpreting off of your own understanding? I don't understand what they mean by dichotomy. They're referring to like Christians having a dichotomy in their theology yeah i don't know what that means okay this one coming in from samir farsane says if jesus himself wow are these about muhammad let's see <laughs> i'm reading i'm doing a word search this one from sauce me down says do, do you two believe galatians 1 8 and 9 since gabriel gave muhammad this grandiose new revelation yeah, so uh, j just so everyone knows, they're referring to Galatians 1, which says that if anyone comes with a different gospel, uh, he is to be eternally condemned. And so I, I can already answer for them, they're not, I, they're not going to accept the Apostle Paul. So, they would, so I'm assuming they would reject that. This one from Christina Reeve says, to Muhammad. Huh? Okay, so yeah. they say, did Allah say, quote, be and it is, or is everything a part of him? Which is it? Well, 
when he's saying to something be and it becomes, that is when he has judged a matter. If there is a matter to be judged and he decided on that matter, he says be and it becomes. Now, God calls himself the reality. So everything is happening within the grasp from God, within God, in God. Yes, he is not the actual creation itself. God is a much bigger entity of infinity. But we all come back to this infinity where we are judged after we are resur resurrected from our death. You got it. I'm looking for any more that are about Muhammad per se. One way apologetics. Thank you. They say, question to Muslim guests. How do you know what century Muhammad revealed the Quran in? Uh, it wasn't Muhammad who... What was what, the question again? Muhammad revealed the Quran? How do you so know just, what century yeah, that Muhammad yeah, revealed I, I, it? Yeah, I, I understood it. They're, they're asking if, uh, if you don't... Uh, if you don't accept the other sources, how do you even know when the Quran was revealed to Muhammad and when Muhammad lived? Because, yeah, so I think that's... But, the, the, yeah, the, the point is that there are uh, points of history, but that's not part of our guidance. Look, people are missing the point of the objective of the Quran, what the Quran is actually here to do. The Quran is actually here to give people guidance to God. But it is, it's not in the point where these are external issues where if you want to take it up, as, as a person, you are interested in that, that's up to you. But it's not part of our guidance. So anything external to the Quran, we are not interested. Yeah. We're not going to be asked about that on the Day of Judgment. That's, just, that's just... This one. Actually relevant. Stupid Beta Energy says, What miracles or fulfilled predictions are attributed to Muhammad that support his claim to prophethood? Oh, there, there are some in the Quran. Uh, for instance, uh, Quran chapter 48, verse 27, there was a prophecy about they going to have the conquest of Mecca. It happened during his time. Quran chapter 8, verse 43 to 34, God showed him a dream concerning a vision where they will dominate against the disbelievers. It happened at his time. Quran chapter 44, verse 9, verse 15, God used the smoke to show him a sign when he's going to annihilate some of his people. It happened at his time. And Quran chapter 10, verse 46 to verse 49, prophesies about messengers to come for every nation, which is still happening. We have having messengers, not prophets messengers for every nation is still happening people delivering the message of the quran quran chapter 27 verse 82 talks about a, a tool which will actually be able to tell people about the verses of god we are in that time now yeah so prophecies are there a lot this one from sauce me now and says muslims muslim guests why would you believe in a prophet who sinned over a prophet before him who didn't sin i think i understand his question if is that I think they're talking about Jesus at this point. Yeah, but, no, I th I, th I think he said. I mean, I, I could James. You might want to read it again, but I think it's saying, why would you believe in Muhammad, who is told to repent of his sins in the Quran when Jesus is is sinless? Yeah, he have to repent. Basically, saying, why would you prefer it? exactly as David said? Oh, okay, well, no. So every prophet had a different uh, favor from God. So. The mother of Mary, she prayed to God, or sorry, the yeah, the mother of Mary, she prayed to God for God to protect her seed, which is Mary, and the seed of Mary from the devil. So that was the favor of Mary and her son, that they would not be tempted by the devil, and the devil would not have control over them. Uh, but that does not apply to all the prophets. The prophets can make mistakes. When they do, as God said in uh, uh, that, even he told Moses that the messengers are not, they don't have fear when they're walking with God, but only if they uh, cause some oppression and if they correct their ways, they come back into the area of no fear. So, so Prophet Muhammad did not have the same favors as Jesus, but the book that came down to Prophet Muhammad is a lot easier to follow than the gospel. Which yeah, you can no, still find God if you follow the gospel. Exactly. And to top up to put top up on that, because also the difference is because Jesus had the Holy Spirit with him constantly, unlike the difference between him and Muhammad. It doesn't mean Muhammad never had the spirit of God, but we are talking about the Holy this Spirit. One. That is the favor on him. From stupid beta energy says, How do Islamic and non-Islamic sources differ on Muhammad's character and actions? And what does this mean for his prophethood's authenticity? Well, to be I, honest, it's very sad. Some of the stuff they wrote about the Prophet is just not right. I think well, to understand who Prophet Muhammad 
is is actually drafted in the Quran. This is where you get who he is. Going external sources is like eventually you taking up evidences from his enemies because according to Quran chapter six, verse one hundred and twelve to one hundred and thirteen, every prophet had enemies who who formulate the decorative speech against every prophet, which eventually happened to Prophet Muhammad, and that is the fabrication whereby they can have narrations such as marrying six years old girls, sleeping with eleven wives, doing you know a lot of things which are out of out of, out of concept exactly. So. The external sources will confuse the narrative of who the prophet is. Yeah, and and you can see in the Quran, there's a lot of parts where God is telling the prophet say, like they do this or they say this, this is the answer. But in the exactly. hadith, you see the prophet is saying other things. So when God is commanding them to say things, the hadith is he's saying something else. Contrary. Yeah. Just a few more, and then we'll be jumping to those closings. Anwar Stevenson, I don't understand this. They say, I told you, Avery, I'm not made of money. Destroy the Ebonite. What is? The Ebonites are, they reject Paul. The Ebonite pedo worshipping me. <laughs> Never mind that one. Okay. You don't, uh, you don't have, one, you don't, yeah, you don't have to read every one, James. <laughs> this one, from, exactly. let's see, the Nehitu says, all right, we'll skip that one. Some of these, I'm not sure what they mean, and I have a, a bad feeling about them. So I'm not going to read it. We're going to just skim through this one coming in from. Did I say something really bad with that last one? All right, this one from two seconds. I'm like, what's the word? Frazzled. I'm just kind of getting my bearings here again. You're going to be struggling for the next debate, James. I'm almost there. This one they say the nay. Well, that one's last. XX WLZXX says Muhammad is repeatedly accused of being a plagiarist and taking legends of old. We know for a fact that the Quran is full of apocryphal legends based on historical standards. Would that make him false? Oh, actually, let, let me just let me just comment on this. I'm not even I'm not even using it to uh, to attack, but I just wanted to point out some. Uh, I, I think the so the idea is that there are stories in the Quran, and we actually have a pretty good idea where these stories come from. And some of them come from sources that uh, are no, no one considers authentic, like, you know, Dulcar Nain finding, you know, uh, heading out west and finding the place where the sun sets or, or appeared to set or something like that, whatever, whatever you want to say, the sleepers in the cave and so on. And most Muslims will say, no, those things happen. But I have heard from a couple of Muslims, Isa recently and Shabir Ali, who believe that the Quran can quote fables to teach lessons. So it's, it's that the Quran isn't taking them as, as uh, factual or historical. It's quoting sources. And Shabir Ali compared it to, you know, a, 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 someone could draw a moral lesson from like a, a Marvel film or something like that and make a point. But yeah, I was, I was just, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I, I just like to know these guys' perspectives because that's what the question is about looks like. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, David, but isn't Dul Qarnay mentioned by name in Daniel? Um, you have, I'm not saying dual Karnain is fictional. I'm saying that the story about him going, no, going West and finding the place where the sun set and then finding the place where the sun rises and then building this giant wall that keeps out the hordes of, uh, Gog and Magog and so on. This comes from the glorious deeds of Alexander and the Alexander romances. We know that no one takes these as, so dual Karnain, Alexander the Great is a historical, person but these stories are legends they were circulating in the time of muhammad and we find them in the quran so uh so some, for some, some people so for, some people so for some some muslims would take that as as a problem and say no these these are actually happen whereas shabir ali would say it, it doesn't need to have happened you can still be drawing the point you can still be draw, drawing a point out of something even that didn't happen but that is his opinion yeah, he said yeah that no no it. that's why i was asking your opinions yeah yeah so because, people... uh, yeah we we have Okay, moment. If you want to speak, you can you can just say something. No, no, go ahead. To me, to me, as some people also attach Dul Karnain to uh, Cyrus the Great. This one from yeah, last one, and then we go into those closings. The Nay Hitsu says this debate is over without. Let me know if I'm saying these wrong. Sahih Hadith. How can you know anything about Muhammad since the Quran is not a book about Muhammad? Mohammed, do you want to take that or should I take? Uh, you go ahead. 
Okay, uh, p people have, uh, people actually don't get the concept of why the Quran is here. Quran is to serve as a book of guidance to mankind, for mankind, right? It is not actually here to tell you about the personal life or biography of the prophet. It does, of course, tells you about some parts of the prophet, which is relevant to our, our guidance. But it is not here to tell you the entirely about his birth, about his biography. The main concept of the Quran coming here is to guide mankind towards God. And even the prophet himself was asked to, to lead the people to the guidance of God, to invite people towards God. So it's not mainly a book which is here to be telling you about personal life of Muhammad, just as they have in the hadith, fabricated hadith concerning him. You understand? So this is the missing link people are not getting. They think the Quran is here to actually tell us about who Muhammad is, what, what he is. No, not, not entirely, no. That, no. James, can I get 10 seconds? This might be a good opportunity for those closings. We want to have a full 30 Minute? seconds. 30 seconds per person or something like that? Sure. Let's do it. Starting with Muhammad. So the, so the point of the religion is on the day of judgment, God is going to ask you that he gave you a set time in the world. How did you make the world a better place? The Quran is giving you a shortcut on how to live your life. And the prophet has given us the tools for us to be good, upstanding uh, individuals. Now, the things that people are pertaining into Sahih Bukhari and all this is literally the worship of the Prophet. They're just thinking about the Prophet all day instead of thinking about God. Now, to us, it is very clear that the Prophet Muhammad was sent from God with the spirit of truth and the Holy Spirit is because of the book that he came with. There's a lot of prophecies that came that happened and it guided us to have a, a, a life where we are constantly in thinking about God, the great, the merciful, who we want to meet at the end. Our thoughts is not about Muhammad and the companions. Our thought is not about Jesus or Moses or David. It's just literally God and how he's affecting our world, our day to day. Thank you very much. We'll Thank kick you. it over to Shuaib. The floor is all yours. Yeah. So in summary, the, the idea of uh, we being here trying to prove that a prophet is a true prophet is based on also perspectives because whatever we try to quote from the christian bible or the quran it's at the end of the day stand on perspective and what which each individual understands towards uh, the guidance so what we are here to achieve is actually to to present the argument whereby people can actually weigh up the options and see which one is more sensible and up for the take so that, that is what i have to say and thank you to the audience as well for participating thank you Thank you, Shuaib. And we'll kick it over to, we'll go left to right. David, floor is all yours. Yeah, so um, we're, we're asking whether Muhammad's a true prophet. And the case we basically got was that uh, Muhammad is in the Bible. Not surprising they went there because that is the position of the Quran. But problem is you go to the Bible and over and over again, you find that Muhammad was a false prophet. They went to 1 John when, according to 1 John, Muhammad was an antichrist. They go to the Gospel of John where father and son together send the comforter. This is a Trinitarian passage that completely flies in the face of Islam. Uh, uh, they went there. We didn't really get into, we didn't get into Isaiah, but they, they quoted Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42 is one of, uh, one of four servant songs that are all talking about the same servant. And if you look at Isaiah 53, it talks about this servant dying for the sins of others. This flies in the face of Islam. So it's just a problem that they go to a book that completely contradicts Islam as a defense of Muhammad. Not, not only that, but but we found a, a lot of moments here where our, our friends here, or one of them at least, uh, left Islam, committed shirk many times because of the theological problems you have when you quote the Injil, the gospel, and try to plug Muhammad in there. You get uh, theology saying that Jesus is, is, is partnered with Allah who sent Muhammad who comes from out of Allah, just like all of us and everything comes from out of Allah. Uh, so it really just the theology is unclear, as but the Quran says it's clear for the believers. Thank you very much, Jeff.